Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all again. I'm going to be reading from Judges 13. I'm going to be reading the whole chapter. Um, if you don't know, this is the beginning of the story of Samson. And as a teacher, I dreaded this moment. Why, you say? Because I knew that God had been telling me to teach judges, and here I am coming to Samson, one of the most popular stories in the Bible. If you haven't heard the story of Samson, you've been living in a hole. Everyone knows the story of Samson. It made me think of bone broth. What? Bone broth. When you cook the bone broth, you put the bones in, after some time, maybe a day, I usually do it for a day, I take all the meat I can take out, then I put the bones back in, I put some flavoring in, and I do it for two more days. And by the time you're done, you pull that bone out, there is nothing left on that bone. And that's what I feel like. I've got the story of Samson. It's all been heard, it's all been sucked out. People know a lot about this story. But we're gonna go through it anyway. And hopefully I can point out some new things that you may have not seen or some things that you already know and just um, give some story a little bit more depth. So here we go. I'm going to be reading from Judges 13. I'm just starting at verses one and two. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Jehovah, and Jehovah delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. Okay, so we start off with this man, Manoah. If you don't know, Manoah means rest. I wanted to point this out because as we go through the story, he doesn't sound like he's full of rest. He's pretty restless um, and wants to know. But also I wanted to bring up that he's of the tribe of Dan. And I wanted you to turn to Genesis 49, verses 16 and 18. And I've done this before, I love to do this. I, we're looking at the blessings, or the blessing that was given to Dan from his father, um, Israel. Or Jacob. So Genesis 49 verses 16 and 8 through 18. Dan shall judge his people. As one of the tribes of Israel, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heels, so that its riders shall fall backward. I have waited for your salvation, O Jehovah. As I was studying and looking at some commentaries, a lot of them said that this blessing to Dan was for this moment here um, in Judges, um, and that Dan was going to bring up a judge. And this is the judge that they're going to be bringing up, Samson. Well, let's continue with verses in Judges 13, verses 3 through 5. And the angel of Jehovah appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So here, the mother is getting um, the message that her son is going to be a Nazarite um, from the womb. Why is that important? Well, let's go to number 6, 1 through 20, and let's read about the Nazarite vow. Numbers 6, 1 through 21, sorry. Okay. 
Then Jehovah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When either a man or a woman consecrates an offering to take the vow of a Nazarite, to separate himself to Jehovah, he shall separate himself from wine and similar drink. He shall, ne neither, he shall drink neither vinegar made from wine, nor vinegar made from similar drink. Neither shall he drink any grape juice, nor eat fresh grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation, he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine from seed to skin. All the days of the vow of his separation, no razor shall come upon his head until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to Jehovah, he shall be holy. Then he shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow all the days he separates himself to Jehovah. He shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean, even for his father or his mother, for his brother or his sister when they die, because his separation to God is on his head. All the days of his separation he shall be holy to Jehovah. And if anyone dies very suddenly beside him, and he defiles his consecrated head, then he shall shave his head on the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day he shall shave it. Then on the eighth day he shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And the priest shall offer one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering and make atonement for him because he sinned in regard to the corpse. And he shall sanctify his head that same day. He shall consecrate to the Lord, to Jehovah, the days of his separation and bring a male lamb in its first year as a trespass offering. But the former days shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall present his offering to Jehovah, one male lamb in its first year without blemish as a burnt offering, one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish as a sin offering, one ram without blemish as a peace offering, a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil in their grain offering with their drink offerings. Then the priest shall bring them before Jehovah and offer his sin offering and his burnt offering. And he shall offer the ram as a sacrifice of a peace offering to Jehovah. With the basket of unleavened bread, the priest shall also offer its grain offering and its drink offering. Then the Nazarite shall shave his consecrated head at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and shall take the hair from his consecrated head and put it on the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall take the boiled shoulder of the ram, one unleavened cake from the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaved and consecrated his hair. And the priest shall wave them as a wave offering before Jehovah. They are holy for the priest together with the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows to Jehovah the offering for his separation. And besides that, whatever else his hand is able to provide according to the vow which he takes, so he must do according to the law of his separation. So, at this point, um, the mother of Samson is told to make a Nazarite vow for her son. So this is a pretty rare thing. She, uh, an angel comes and declares that her son's going to be born. Um, I just want to point these things out. She's barren with no child. An angel comes and tells her that she's going to be having a child. And now... He is going to be born given a Nazarite vow. So let's continue on. Judges 13, 6 through 7. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Did anyone catch what she forgot to mention? 
She forgot to mention anything about shaving of the head. That's right. Um, I, I think this point is is mostly just that we're going to see it. Obviously, what's going to happen with Samson. Um, I, I don't think that it's it's uh, that she forgot the fact that that was what they would need to happen, but it was something that was forgotten when she told her husband. And I just thought it was um, sort of funny as we look forward to what's going to happen that, that she forgot to mention that. And we're gonna continue on um, Judges eight or 13, eight through 14. Then Manoah prayed to Jehovah and said, Oh, my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us that we shall do for the child who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Then the woman ran in haste and told her husband and said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. So Manoah arose and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Manoah said, Now, let your words come to pass. What will be the boy's rule of life and his work? So the angel of Jehovah said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor may she drink wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean. All that I commanded her, let her observe. I thought it was interesting. Um, verse 12, Manoah asks about a job and what his son was going to be doing. This sort of cut to me, because I know that uh, as we were starting to homeschool and, and look at um, what we wanted to do with our children, that was the very question I asked. What am I going to be able to teach them that's going to help them in their jobs in the future? I was more concerned about what they'd be doing tomorrow than what they'd be learning today. And sometimes we need to remember that, that we need to say, we have to focus in on where we're at today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And then this angel, we'll call him right now, the angel, he, he's like, do this thing. Do this thing right here. This is what I want you to focus on. Do this thing. It wasn't about um, what his vocation was going to be. God was going to take care of that. It wasn't about where, whose um, table he was going to be setting in front of or, or who he was going to be serving. It was focus on this one thing right now. And sometimes that's a hard thing for a parent. And um, so it's just a reminder of what we need to do right now is listen to the Lord. Continuing on in Judges 13, verses 15 through 22. Then Manoah said to the angel of Jehovah, Please let us detain you. Sorry, lost my place. Then Manoah said to the angel of Jehovah, Please let us detain you, and we will prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of Jehovah said to Manoah, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you offer a burnt offering, you must offer it to Jehovah. For Manoah did not know he was, in, he was the angel of Jehovah. Then Manoah said to the angel of Jehovah, what is your name? That when your words come to pass, we may honor you. And the angel of Jehovah said to him, Why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered upon the rock of Jehovah, and he did a wondrous thing 
while Manoah and his wife looked on. It happened as the flame went up toward, the, toward heaven from the altar, the angel of Jehovah ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground. When the angel of Jehovah appeared no more to Manoah and his wife, then Manoah knew that he was the angel of Jehovah. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. I know we've talked about Christophanes here before. Um, I, I don't know that there's any way to 100% prove that, these things. A Christophany is when someone sees uh, Yeshua, the Messiah, before he was born. Um, so in the Old Testament, when we have these stories where it looks like it could be Yeshua, that's called a Christophany. It's just the word we use for that. But I was hoping to show, pull out some of these things and show that this could have been one of those times. First off, I want to go back to verse 18 in chapter 13 of Judges. And the angel of Jehovah said to him, Why do you ask, my, ask me my name, seeing it is wonderful? I had no idea what that meant, <laughs> wonderful. So this word is pili. It means wonderful or secret. Um, when you're reading the Bible, usually the best thing to do when you're looking up words that you don't understand is to look at other places that word is used. And usually the first place, um, the first time it's in the Bible gives you the most insight. Well, this is one of the rare cases where that's not true. This is the first time this word is used. The second time it's used is in Psalm 139, and I want to read that to you. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. So we're not going to read the whole chapter, but just 1 through 6. O Jehovah, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Jehovah, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, same word, for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. So what this person or being is saying is, you, you, don't, you won't understand what I tell you. You can't fathom it. If I say it, you're going to be confused and think something that you shouldn't be thinking. Is there any name that you can think of that would confuse him? Well, let's continue on. Let, let's turn to Philippians 2. 5 through 7, and I want to see the character of Yeshua there, the attitude, the kind of man he was. Philippians 2, 5 through 7. Let his mind be in you, which was also in uh, Yeshua Messiah, or Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That means that even though he was God, he didn't consider himself to be God, and that Jehovah was the one he always wanted to point to. And if you read through this and you see um, this man wants to offer him a meal. He's like, I want no part of it. Give it to Jehovah. He's the one who does everything. So we see this common attitude, this common character in this being. But the last one I wanted to point out, I already read to you. We can turn back to Genesis 49:18, And we're talking about Dan. 
and he says, For your salvation I wait, O Jehovah. Now, if Dan's uh, future, uh, when, when Israel was talking to Dan and, and giving him his uh, life and telling him what's going to happen, and this was pointing to Samson, this should hit you pretty hard. For your salvation, does anyone know what the word salvation is there? It's Yeshua. For your Yeshua, I wait, O Jehovah. If this was the time that they were talking about, Dan was going to be preparing to have a judge over Israel, and they are waiting for Yeshua, the salvation of Jehovah. What would that have done to Manoah? What would he have thought? If he said, well, my name's Yeshua, I'm God's salvation, he would have fell down and worshipped him. Right there. And that is not what Yeshua wanted. Or if it wasn't Yeshua and it was another angel, it's the same thing. Whatever this messenger was, whoever it was, it didn't want him to fall down and worship him. It wanted him to focus his energy onto Yehovah. And that's something we all need to remember is when we are lost and confused, focus our thoughts on Jehovah. So, continuing on, we'll finish up the chapter. Um, verses 23 through 35 in chapter 13. But his wife said to him, I love how his wife seemed to be <laughs> so just calm and like it's all right this is what we got to do we know and, and she's she's sort of the voice of reason here but his wife said to him if Jehovah had desired to kill us he would not have <laughs> accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands nor would he have shown us all these things nor would he have told us such things as these at this time so the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and Jehovah blessed him, and the spirit of Jehovah began to move upon him at Mahana Dan between Zorah and Eshtal. So here we have the birth of Samson. Um, his name means like the sun, the bright the sun in the sky shining, but obviously. Um, in English, it, you know, we can think of the son, Yeshua. That wouldn't have been true in uh, Hebrew, obviously. But, so, like the sun shining, I just wanted to point out some things that we can see in his life that might have been similar to someone else's birth. Um, we'll talk more about those as we go on into the um, teaching of Samson. Uh, but here we get a good introduction of the next judge of Israel, and he's unlike any of the other judges. He, he doesn't become a military leader. He doesn't um, judge, like sit and judge over Israel and like some of the judges did. So he's completely different. And we're coming in at his birth rather than finding out about his, when he's first called. So this is, this is very different than the rest of the judges. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.